Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coolant video. In this video I'm going to review the regenerative braking system of the Bolt EV. Part of the reason I want to do this is it seems like there's a little bit of confusion out there about one, what regenerative braking is, and two, how it's implemented in the Bolt EV. Even experienced journalists and people with a lot of experience with electric vehicles seem to get the regenerative braking system of the Bolt EV wrong. So I figured I would do some clarifications. But rather than just talking about it, I'm actually going to demonstrate how the functionality works in real world driving. Now the first thing before we get started is a lot of people seem to not understand how regenerative braking works. Well, an electric motor can work as both a generator and a motor. So the motor in an electric vehicle can also generate electricity if force is applied to it. That's essentially what happens with regenerative braking, is all of the force and momentum of your vehicle, if when you want to decelerate, you put it through the electric motor, that motor then creates electricity that gets fed back into the battery essentially recharging the battery. So it's really a win-win. You don't use your friction brakes and you get to add energy to your battery that you can use for driving later on. The other thing that seems to be a bit confusing about the Bolt EV in particular and its regenerative braking system is just how GM implemented it. The way they created it, you have close to full regeneration really no matter what mode you choose to drive in. And that's the powerful aspect about the way GM implemented the regenerative braking in the Bolt EV. So you have two modes, D and L. People might confuse that and think that you're either driving in a high mode or a high gear and a low gear. There aren't actually separate gears. It's all one gear, but essentially it's the lowest level of regenerative braking in D mode and the highest level of regenerative braking in L mode. And those will change the way the vehicle drives. In D mode, it's going to drive more like a regular traditional car. You're going to let off the accelerator and you'll coast more so than you'll stop. In L mode, however, if those of you who are familiar with manual transmission vehicles, ever used compression braking or jake braking, sometimes they refer to it as, it feels much more like that. The vehicle is actually slowing down significantly when you let off the accelerator. And that's where the term one pedal driving comes in because essentially you can control 100% of the vehicle's acceleration and deceleration using only one pedal, the accelerator. GM also added a feature called the regen on demand paddle which is behind the steering wheel, modulating that, and it only goes on and off while driving, provides you the maximum amount of regenerative braking given the mode that you're in. So D, the maximum regeneration will be 65 kilowatts. In L, it will be 70 kilowatts. Now, there are a couple of factors that will affect regenerative braking, and one could be battery temperature, another could be how full the battery is. GM also provides a hilltop reserve mode, which reserves 10% of the top of the battery. And what this ensures is that you have 100% regeneration available at all times. If you charge the battery to 100%, you will not have full regenerative braking available because there's just no place to put the power that the electric motor is producing as you're decelerating. Now you can see the line below the energy marker and the grayed out regen icon that indicates that you have less than maximum regenerative braking available but you'll notice how far down that line is so you still at this point have a max regen of probably 35 to 40 kilowatts so without going into any more of the boring details let's see how this works in real life driving okay so for this first test we're going to be in d I don't normally drive there, so this will be new for me. And 
and I will note that it's really hard to get full regen in D, which is why I don't use it. Uh, a lot of times, it, you're just not having the velocity or force to get it. So, here we go, I'm going to completely let off the pedal. And as you can see, we're not really getting the, the regen that you would normally see. It's 16 kilowatts and we're coming up at the light. So I'll use the regen on demand paddle as much as I can and the brake for the rest of it because it just wasn't gonna slow us down from freeway speeds in time. And as you could probably see there, lifting off the pedal was enough to roll forward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use D, but instead of just using D, we're going to use the regen on demand paddle, and we're not going to use the brake pedal at all. So this way you're going to see a significantly different amount of regeneration than you did when we were just using D and it took a very long time to come to a stop. All right, we're getting ready to exit, and uh, we're up to freeway speeds. And if I'm using the regen on demand paddle, I, I really don't care. I have a lot more control over the braking of the vehicle, and you'll see how much regeneration we have. So I'm applying the regen on demand paddle now. We're seeing 65 kilowatts, or up to 65 kilowatts of regen in D. Now, the thing is, uh, this will bring you to a complete stop, and you don't need to use the brake pedal at all, but one of the issues with this is, well, one, if you don't hold the region on demand paddle down, you'll start to move again. So here we are completely stopped. I have region on demand on. Uh, and it's holding me in place. But the reason I don't like this mode using D plus regen on demand is because when you do that, the, the regen on demand paddle turns with your steering wheel. You don't always have it available. And that's a, that's a big negative to me because you need uh, regen on demand to be available to you whenever. Now, just going through this corner, it's a really awkward movement for me to get regen on demand while I'm in D. And that's why I usually use L. It's just a way more streamlined, easier way of driving. Now we're gonna exit again, and this time still in D mode, but I'm going to use, instead of region on demand, I'm going to use the brake pedal, and I'm going to try to modulate the brake pedal so that I don't use any friction brakes. It's really difficult to do, uh, but if you can, you'll see the same amount of max regeneration with the brake pedal in D mode as you'll see with the regen on demand pedal in D mode. That's an aspect of the regenerative braking system in the Bolt EV that nobody really likes to talk about is that you have max regen available uh, pretty much in all modes. There's about a five kilowatt improvement uh, going in L mode, but that's about it. Here we are approaching the exit making sure we're up to freeway speeds. And like I said, I'm going to try to modulate this as best I can, but it's really difficult to get that max regen uh, with the brake pads. And we're gonna check on Torque Pro to make sure that I'm not actually, uh, you know, applying any friction brakes at all. All right, so we're exiting now. That was up to 50 kilowatts. Like I said, I've gotten it to 65, but it's hard to do with the brake pedal without using uh, friction brakes at all.
We're gonna be using L mode. The first time, just L. The second time, we'll use the regen on demand paddle. So we're exiting the freeway. Well, it's up to 59, but it will go up to 60. But as you can see, I'm not, I'm not using any pedal at all. And in fact, even coming down this really steep, uh, you know, off ramp, I actually still have to put my foot on the accelerator uh, to make sure that I have uh, sufficient momentum to get me to the end. And this is maybe where it takes a little bit of finesse, is coming to an exact stop where you want to uh, without having to put energy back out of the uh, battery into the motor. All right, so now we're going to uh, exit the freeway using L mode plus regen on demand paddle. So we're getting ready to exit L mode plus regen on demand. So speed up a little bit. And as you can see, it's peaking out now at 70 kilowatts, no, no brake torque. Uh, and again, this slows you down even faster uh, so that you end up having to modulate your accelerator again just to not have to come to a complete stop. Okay, so there you have it. With the Bolt EV's regenerative braking system in drive, if you just let off the accelerator, you're really not going to see a huge amount of regeneration, maybe 15 to 20 kilowatts, really not enough to slow down the car appreciably. However, if you like driving in that mode, it's not really a big deal because if you use the regen on demand paddle, you can get up to 65 kilowatts of braking force. It will bring you to a complete stop. But the other aspect is, if you simply just want to use the brake pedal, it will actually provide up to 65 kilowatts of braking force. Now, I wasn't able to demonstrate that in this video, but I have seen that in the past. Now, at that point, it will start to engage the friction brakes. You're still able to drive the Bolt EV like a regular car, and you'll be able to maximize most of the regenerative braking capability in D. Now, my preference is to drive in L mode, which, without anything else, you have a max regen of 60 kilowatts. It will slow down the car extremely fast, not quite as fast as D plus paddle, but enough to bring the car to a complete stop. And that's why you're going to end up having to modulate the pedal to make sure you don't come to a complete stop prematurely. You basically get to pick and choose how much deceleration you want. Now, if you're in L mode and it natively isn't enough braking for you, you want to slow down even more, you can use the Regen On Demand paddle, which will bring it up to 70 kilowatts of regeneration, no friction brakes being used whatsoever. Now, if the Regen On Demand paddle isn't available, you can still use your brakes in L mode, uh, but you really don't have that much extra play, right? Only maybe 10 kilowatts of additional regenerative braking that you can get from using that. So I hope this video explains a little bit better how the Bolt EV's regenerative braking system works, uh, how little you actually have to use the friction braking in regular driving, even when you're in one pedal driving coming to a complete stop. That's why right now I consider the Bolt EV to really be the only true one pedal driving system that's available. I'm holding out hope for the Jaguar I-Pace. Hopefully they were able to program it to do something similar so that the friction brakes never have to be engaged in typical driving. Now the one knock on the Bolt EV's regenerative braking system is that when you're in a complete stop without your foot on the brake pedal, the brake lights don't come on. That's something I think GM should probably address. It's not a huge issue, but it would be nice to have those brake lights come on uh, when you're completely stopped in something like L mode or with regen on demand paddle. Now, they do engage automatically anyway when you hit 0.1 G of deceleration or more. So in those cases, you're still going to indicate to the people behind you that you are braking. So you really don't have to worry about that too much. 
Anyway, let me know what you think, if you have any questions, uh, what you think about the format of the video. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, helps me to make these sorts of videos. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.